to be taken into consideration. Motion moved. I now call upon the members whose names have been received for participation in the discussion. Dr. Amar Patnaik, time allotted eight minutes. Thank you, Chairman, sir. Sir, I would like to first, first of all, uh, welcome the introduction of this bill. I think this was necessary, considering the fact that the original act of 2017 had basically tried to give academic autonomy to all the IIMs. The IIMs have been perceived to be institutes of preeminent importance in our country, national importance, and in fact, in some ways, across the globe, they had very high rankings. Some of the IIMs featured in the top 50. The current bill which has been brought in essentially has two parts. One part is to give, uh, is, to, is to upgrade the National Institute of Industrial Engineering, Mumbai, into an Indian Institute of Management, Mumbai. I support this particular upgradation. At the same time, I could probably recommend to the Honorable Minister if instead of only looking at public sector institutes, if it is possible to also upgrade some other institutes of importance in states with private participation or joint state and central government participation so that we would have more number of institutes in the country and the management education ecosystem will spread across the country and you will not get limited to only state capitals or in some cases important cities of the, uh, of, of the country. It is important that rural people of India, agro management, agro forestry management, these are issues which should be taken up by management institutes also and not necessarily only business management. This is the interdisciplinarity that India can actually bring in which the foreign institutes of management do not have. Now, the second part uh, is basically consisting of five important amendments, and these amendments I will refer to one by one. Uh, the first one is relating to Section 10 of the Principal Act. The Section 10 of the Principal Act, it talks about the President of India shall be the visitor of every institute. This is an, this is an insertion which has been made, and I wholeheartedly support this because I think all the, all the Indian institutes of technology, which have equal amount of, uh, you know, stature in the global arena, also have the president as the visitor. So I think this was necessary. While this particular bill, uh, this particular insertion is welcome, I would also like to refer to the insertion of 10A2, subclause 2. The visitor may appoint one or more persons to review the work and progress of any institute and to hold inquiries into the affairs thereof and to report thereon in such manner as the visitor may require or may direct. Why this has come up? This has come up, Honorable Chair, because the existing situation in the Indian Institutes of Management after the 2017 Act, which gave them complete freedom, operational, financial, academic, all kinds of freedom, they did not really institutionalize the kind of protocols required to deserve that kind of autonomy. I will refer to one of their very celebrated ex-directors of IIM Ahmedabad, Dr. Bakul Dholakia. In an interview, he said, the IAM Act mandated an independent review of each institute every three years. I'm talking about the 2017 Act, which was to be conducted by eminent independent individuals who could objectively evaluate the institute's overall performance. The IAM Act specifies that the review report must be presented to the board and after its approval should be placed in the public domain. The idea is that the board the, manage, the director would be responsible to the board and the board would be responsible to the public because after all, many of these IIMs are completely funded by the government. There has to be some amount of accountability. But he himself states, however, in last six years, only IIM Bangalore has conducted such a review. And therefore, I support the insertion of 10A2 which says that the president may appoint one or more persons to review the work in progress. 
However, I would like to add a word of caution here. The word of caution is, I think the, the review of work in progress should be in areas other than academic and research related matters because I think there the interference should be minimum unless the person who is reviewing is also an expert in that particular domain. I believe that autonomy and accountability go hand in hand. If you want autonomy, you also have to be accountable, which was not happening, and therefore this bill is welcome. Inefficiency of the existing grievance redressal procedure and breakdown of the governance structure in the IM resulted in this particular introduction of these, these amendments in the original 2017 Act. However, as I said, while under-regulation is bad, over-regulation, which might lead to interference, is worse, far worse. So I think we have to be careful about this. The history has, however, revealed, and this is what Dr. Dolakia says, that government intervention in the IM affairs has been very minimal. And this is really welcome. I hope this particular trend will continue despite the new in, uh, introduction of a visitor and a committee to, to, to look after the affairs uh, in terms of reviewing their performance from time to time. Then I'll come to the next uh, uh, section, section 16 of the Principal Act, which has been amended at, at, at sub subsection 3. It says that the director shall be appointed out of a panel of names recommended by a search come selection committee to be constituted by the board consisting of XYZ. Now, the point here is what has happened was that such a procedure already existed, but there was completely, it's a kind of inbreeding that was happening. There was nobody from outside. Now the, prince, now the president will be, appoint, will be able to appoint somebody into the search and selection committee, which is welcome. I could again give a suggestion to the honorable minister here, since he is present here, that this process should not, however, you know, be longer than the previous system. Would it be possible that the existing board, some of the members could be designated who will act as the search and selection committee, recommend a panel of names to the government of India, to the president, who will do the selection, in which case the process may become faster. The next point is relating to the committee of uh, the, the uh, certain, certain experts believe that the IIMs are public institutions answerable to the people of India and the bill will ensure they do not turn into private fiefdoms, which is what I explained just now. But there is also a belief that will there be unnecessary interference. The bill, however, precludes this possibility by ensuring that the president is at the helm of affairs while directing any kind of inquiry. Earlier, the inquiry is being ordered by the board itself into its affairs, which, which was there was definitely a conflict of interest. So I think the amendments are more, more or less in order. Only thing I would now hope that in 2009-10, IIM Ahmedabad ranked 11th in the Financial Times rankings for the one-year program and 41st in the economic rankings for the second two-year programs. However, its current rankings have declined to 51 in FT rankings, from 11 to 51, and 41 has become 99 in economist rankings. With these changes and with kind of an affirmative intervention into the scheme of things, and with the, under the direction of Honorable Minister, I am sure the, the, the uh, rankings will improve and the ecosystem will improve. However, it is ex extremely important that the management education should spread across the country. People who are probably in, not able to learn in English and uh, learn in local languages, some kind of mechanism could be held in which the IIMs could handhold some of these institutes at the, at, the, at the state level and give them the courseware in local language, in which case the educational uh, knowledge would spread, the management educational knowledge would spread, and this is required for all disciplines and not necessarily in business management. With these, I support the bill, commend the minister and commend the government for bringing in these changes. Thank you so much, sir.